My name is Crowd Akago Idebo, also known as Bishop C. Blunt. I'm a cinematographer, and this is my spotlight. I studied filmmaking at the National Film Institute just where I spent six years acquiring a professional diploma and, and a bachelor's degree in cinematography. And you know, during those six years of study, I was opportunity to get um, a couple of awards as a student, where I, I got the, the best student film in Zuma International Film Festival 2008 as a director, a short film called Little Babel on um, centers around just crisis and how little problems can spike a, a big blown crisis. <laughs> And um, uh, later on, I actually shot a second film called Waiting Lines as a student, which won the best student film at Ion International Film Festival 2010. And that was a big encouragement to me. In 2011, I actually won Zuma Film Festival as the best student film in a film called In Delegiwa Shoes. Another short film that I did that was really, really inspiring to me is Felicity. And I think that film got the best short film at the Festival Cinema Africano in Milan. It's centered around the, um, somebody that's trying to, to put himself in Fela's shoes. That was actually one of the, the, the most inspiring short films I've, I've done lately. And a couple of others. After graduating with those awards and degrees, you know, coming to Lagos to hustle, I discovered that those um, awards and degrees would not take me anywhere because I actually needed to get experience as, as a craftsman, as a cinematographer in the industry. So I started working as assistant with cinematographers both in and outside the country. And by the side, I directed a couple of music videos which I found interesting, like street videos. I love the street so much because it inspires me. It gives me that vision. I grew up in the street and shooting in the street is like, um, you know, seeing what's happening in the streets, like my highs. I did lots of photography. I, I just got my camera then and I started, you know, taking pictures. I don't get bored when I'm just like not doing anything as a freelancer then. I just carry my camera and go into the streets and start taking pictures, trying to perfect my, my, my understanding of contrast. During those years of studying cinematographers and working under them as intern, I got the opportunity to attend the digital cinematography masterclass organized by a German institute called um, One Find the Film. Okay, um, we just finished class for today <laughs> and um, we're going to screen a film now. Come, come meet my mentor, meet my mentor. So from then, I discovered myself as a cinematographer because I had a mentor, I had opportunity to mix with different cinematographers from other parts of the continent, had discussions, had a couple of trainings. So it was like a rebirth. Coming back to the country, I, I was like, yes, I'm ready to, to, to face the industry. I'm ready to, to do something because I'm actually a guy that doesn't want to shoot 200 films or 2,000 films and they're all looking the same. I don't mind shooting five films and they all look differently. Yeah, I love storytelling. I love handheld. I like the audience to, to like see themselves in the old picture. I like telling stories with the camera. I don't, I'm not really too, too keen about moving the camera unnecessarily when it's not passing the message, you know. I like it like frame by frame. Let's see, let's let it just be natural. Natural lighting, natural camera movement. I like, I, I don't like sticks. I, I, I like the camera on my shoulders and let's just move. Let's, let's, let's tell the story, you know. Crimson is like a big challenge for me because it was a three episode series and the three episodes we want to shoot differently, you know, and it was really very interesting to shoot. I actually just got the second prize of Afri Nolly, yeah, directed by Daniel F. Young. I think I enjoyed working with him, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the story, I enjoyed the, the style in which we shot the film. The same way I know you are only looking for a reason to kill me. An old trick my father taught me. My sister came up with this crazy idea. Something called a... Shooting Living Funeral was um, an eye-opener because I just came back from Kenya and 
was the first planned film I did. So I didn't really see much challenges um, shooting Living Funeral because the crew, the script, the actors were just having fun shooting. The only challenge I think was shooting late into the night because I remember at the time we shot two days straight, no sleep. We were running out of time. Producers were saying, guys, you know, we need to, we need to keep up, we need to meet up, we need to achieve these things, we have a lot to do. So we just had to shoot continuously for two days. I think that was the basic challenge I I, I saw in Living Funeral. Apart from that, it was just, you know, it was just fun. We were just having fun working on the film. I knew Living Funeral was going to be a film people would talk about because the story, the actors, and the first film I planned with the director that we shot every scene the way we planned it. This is my first ever nomination as a cinematographer. Although I've gotten um, nominations, but not um, as a cinematographer, but the film project I've been in as best director, best short film, you know, best student film, and I've won all those categories. But I never thought that a short film shot with a 60D would ever get me a nomination for best cinematography. So it's actually, you know, it's very encouraging to me because the style I use in shooting Living Funeral was just a simple style, simple storytelling. It was just something I, I've been studying for a long time and I needed to experiment it. And um, I didn't know it was going to come this far. And Living Funeral actually has been a talk of the town. Everybody wants to see the film. It has had lots of recognition and, you know, acceptance in various film festivals, both in and outside the country. I see myself, I've always want to, you know, want to work in a, in a film set where, where I'm working with a director that knows what he's doing, that has that creativity to challenge my craft. And I see myself in a couple of years working in film sets, not just Nigeria, but all over Africa, because I've been to different countries in Africa and I've seen myself shooting in some very interesting locations. So I really, want to make films. Film is my life. Film is what I dream of and film is really what I want to do. The future for African cinema is really huge because personally to me I feel African stories, Africa as a whole in terms of filmmaking is still a virgin land because we've not started exploring stories and contents that can be of international standard in Africa. So I see African cinema developing in a couple of years because people are you know, gradually venturing into this business and then a lot of people in diaspora are actually coming back home to try to see what they can do to develop the film industry in, in, in various countries. I'm seeing our stories getting its own unique appeal to the universal audience. So I think there's a great future for African cinema because the industry is growing and there's a whole lot of interest and passion developing from that angle. And who can tell, we may get the, the next big thing coming out from Africa soon.